Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4. Now the Bible says, And such trust have we toward God, Somebody say, such trust have we toward God. Say it again. Yes. The Bible says, and such trust have we toward God. Paul is trying to show just how much faith that he had through Christ toward God. You understand? He's trying to tell you how much faith he had through Christ toward God. He's trying to tell you how much faith the apostles had through Christ toward God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8, the Bible says, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. The Bible says, your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. Paul is speaking to a bunch of people who it has been evident across everywhere that their faith toward God is undoubtable. You understand what I'm saying? Let me explain what it means to have faith toward God. If you went to a doctor and the doctor told you you have two days to live. Two. You understand? And then you go in the word of God and the word of God tells you with long life I will satisfy you. These are two words spoken by two different individuals. But Will you sleep that night? Will you rest that night? Will you be free of anxiety and worry that night? Will you smile over the word of the doctor and choose to follow God? Or you fall by the oh God, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. You understand? They tell you tomorrow morning we are going to fire you. But then you read a certain scripture in the word of God that depicts your increase and multiplication. What do you do? Are you going to worry the whole night and day waiting for that letter to come tomorrow morning? I remember when we were candidates. The most frustrating time is when they tell you your results are one week to come. Your heart can leave the chest and fall on the ground. That you need to pick it up every time to even feel it. Oh, it can run for 200 kilometers per hour. Do I have a witness? Not because you did not read or that you don't expect to pass. But there are hazy moments when certain things seem unclear and our future becomes an, a doubt. You understand what I'm saying? The man who walked into the office and the doctor told him, Oh, your heart is going to fail. And that man has to leave every day thinking, My heart is going to fail any time. You understand? And the same time the scripture says that the Lord is the strength of my heart. If they read that scripture to that man, will the man choose the testimony of the word of God or will he continue in the fear 
of what he was told. That's what we call faith toward God. Fear is creating reality and giving power to negative energy. Faith is creating reality and giving power to positive energy. You understand what I'm saying? Fear is the opposite of faith and all of them work literally the same way except that fear is adverse and negative. Faith is positive and progressive. You understand what I'm saying? If a man wakes up and then he puts faith in what he is told, contrary to the word of God, that man is dealing or working under the spirit of fear. You understand? But if a man puts faith and hope in what God has spoken, in spite of the present circumstances, that man is walking in faith. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I'm about to go deeper here. But I need you to understand this. Are you following what I'm saying? Fear is giving power to negative energy, bad reports, and bad testimonies. Faith is giving power and believing in the word of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? God has given you his word because he knows it's all you need to live. The Bible says that the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and their life. They are spirit and their life. They are spirit and their life. And these words, the Bible says, are life to them that find them and medicine to their bones. Whereas well, you're going to bed at night when you say, Oh, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm healthy from the crown of the head to the soles of my feet in the name of Jesus. That is a dose in your body. That's how they just live. They just don't live because they have clean bills of reports. Because there are people we know who are healthy and are dying this morning. Either in a car accident or something. No, no, the guy wasn't even sick. He just died. What? He wasn't sick. The guy was healthy. Because they just live by what? Faith. Are you following what I'm saying? That is how I know that we are going to live a long life. Do you plan to die, Alex? Uh, uh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you plan to suffer and struggle in this world? That's how I know that we are going to live a good life. Because we live by faith. How, how, you, you have faith, me, I don't. But we all know how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you don't have faith here more, are you hearing me? If you don't have faith here more, get your CD and put it on. Hallelujah. If you don't have faith, get the word and read it with your mouth and say, Oh, glory to God. I am a miracle worker. I am a wonder. I am a surprise. I'm, I'm, I'm this. You speak it. Are you following what I'm saying? You speak it. I'm increasing. I'm going far. I'm waxing great. Great things are working in my life. Every time you're speaking, you're putting a dose in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this works in every aspect. Whether you're talking of your finances, whether you're talking of your marriage, whether you're talking of your child is failing you and they've become so funny. All this goes back to the principle of faith. Are you going to choose the report of men, the world, or are you going to choose the report of God? Whose report shall you believe? Somebody shout hallelujah. Faith toward God. Faith to God word. 
that God cannot lie. He is no man that he should lie. If he says that you're more than a conqueror, brother, you are. If he says that you are rich, it doesn't matter what's in your pocket, sister, you are. If he says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, it doesn't matter what looks like in the world, he is. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's faith toward God to know that if he has spoken, ask your neighbor, are you that crazy? Mubuze. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because the just shall live by faith. Can you believe that we live by faith? We live by faith. You live by faith. The substance of things hoped for is what gives you life. The evidence of things not seen is your guarantee of your next destiny, your next story, your next miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now we are in a season of stretching forth and I need you to believe the word of God. Because when the Lord gave me that theme, he told me some will struggle to believe it. It is not easy for some people to easily wake up and spread their tent. Are you following what I'm saying? But you have to believe God. That you're going to see him this year. That you're going to see him next year. That you're going to see him the next ten years. Even if you have to repeat that a million times. For it to sink in your spirit. You continue speaking and believing and confessing and speaking and believing and confessing and speaking and believing and confessing. And, until it sinks in your spirit that I don't have a choice except to do good. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now let's go back to the scripture. We're going to go a bit deeper here. The Bible says, And such faith do we have toward God through Christ. Okay? You're going to love this. Not that we are sufficient. Paul is telling you, this is the faith. This is the trust we have toward God. Because we are not sufficient. Think about it. This is the faith that we have toward God through Christ. Because we know we are not able. Look at that irony. I don't know who I'm talking to. This is the faith we have toward God. Because we know that we are not able. Think about it. This is the faith and trust in Christ toward God that we have that we are not sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves that is why we trust God hey hey I'm not healthy because I swallowed vitamin C I'm not rich because I have many degrees you're not married because you're the most beautiful woman in the world. Hallelujah, somebody. You're not doing signs, miracles, and wonders because you came from the best tribe. You're not anointed because you're a Muganda. Or because you're a Jew. This is the trust that we have toward God. But every time we look into ourselves, there is not enough sufficiency to give you the money you need. There is not enough sufficiency to give you the joy you need. There is not enough sufficiency to give you the health you want. There is not enough science, enough biology to preserve you. This is the trust that we have toward God. If you realize it was a full colon, Go back to the scripture, KJV. This is the faith we have toward God. Pa, pa. Who has seen that? Those two dots change everything. <laughs> Grammatically, they change everything. They imply to say, let us explain to you why we have faith toward God in Christ. Do I have a witness? He says, let me explain to you why we have faith toward God through Christ. 
full colon. Full colon. Full colon. Meaning that anything coming is explaining the statement. It is giving you the reason of the statement. Without it, the statement is not complete and it will not make sense. This is the reason why we have trust through Christ to God. Because he has reminded you and I, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but he says, but our... Oh, our sufficiency is of God. When he says our sufficiency is of God, let me explain to you. God knew that when you enter this life of salvation, you are not going to enter it and then apply your strength. He knew you are not going to enter this deal of salvation and then apply your understanding of faith. He knew you were going to fail. So he gave a provision and said, if they should believe on my name, I have to take out all their sufficiency. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? The first sufficiency he took away from you was human faith. <laughs> That's the first one he took away. He took away your faith as a human being. That's called human hope. Dead hope. Peter says we've been begotten to a lively hope. He took away what you call faith. There are people in the world who say, I have faith. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is the substance of peace, hope for the evidence is not seen. And it is only accorded to people who know God. Of course, there, is, there was a faith that was embedded in the original Adamic nature because he was created in the image of God. So partly, even men of this world have a faith that works, but it works in part. It does not carry the guarantee of the full completion of the man's testimony because it's human made. The faith in the Adamic was not enough. If it was, then there would not have been a need for God to change our course in how we view faith. People in the world believe, even the guy, previous president of the United States, says, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And indeed they did. Praise God. He became the president of the United States of America. Human faith has its results. Much more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Human faith has its results. Much more godly faith. Human faith has its results. But it has a place where it can give up. And at one point, somebody gets to a point and says, you know what? I have tried to believe, now I can't believe anymore. They might not say it, but everything they do would show that they've given up. Human faith has an end. Are you following what I'm saying? This gospel is too good. Tell your neighbor, it is too good to be true. Like I said, the Lord has challenged my spirit to tell us that everything he's doing is an expression of love to you. That is why you don't fear. For he says, perfect love casteth out all what? Fear. For they that fear are not made perfect in love. Why? Because fear has torment. Give me the Amplified of that. I want to read from the Amplified. The Amplified says that, Amplified, there is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. Fear does not exist where a man is full grown. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Fear does not exist. This is it. But is it possible for fear not to exist? Yes, it's possible. He would not say it is if it is not. He would not acquire us to get to the perfection of love if he did not know that we could perfect or be perfected in love. Who is following what I'm saying? It is possible not to fear. It is possible not to fear. He has told you how. He says, be anxious for nothing. But how is that? He cannot tell you if it's not possible. Somebody say it's possible to live a worry-free life. It's possible. Tell your neighbor it's possible. Tell him it's possible. Tell him again it's possible. Put your hand on your spirit, on your stomach, and say it's possible to live a freer, free life. It's possible. If he tells you be anxious about nothing, he knows you can get to a level where nothing, nothing, however bad it looks, can move you. And the Lord has told me, we all have to get there. That's why I'm preaching this season. Why? Because where Fanero is going, where we are going as a ministry, the responsibility for the earth, for the responsibility in the world, the responsibility we have over this nation, this continent and the world as large, well, is too great because many will be saved by watching us. Somebody shout hallelujah. They see how you respond when the pilot says, ladies and gentlemen, the engines are out, the fuel is over, and we don't know whether we're going to make it or not, back or your it belt, so something will happen. Put some air, pull yourself under, maybe something. And then a man sits bored and he says, be of good cheer. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, like Paul said. Such boldness. One time you remember the time when Paul, they had arrested him. They were taking him. Was it to Caesar or Augustus? And then the sheep starts to wave. The waves hit the sheep and they knew that death had come. And the Bible says and all the men on that board started screaming. Every man calling on their God. Are you hearing me? And the son of glory, this darling of heaven, stood before them and he says, Be of good cheer. Gentlemen, for an angel appeared unto me tonight and told me that we shall lose many a sheep, but no life will be lost. Well, think about it. In the middle of the storm. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He told them, fear not. Thou must be brought before Caesar. The angel told him, I think, Lord has given thee all them that fell with him. And the next verse says, uh-huh. Wherefore, sir, he says, be of good cheer. Now, he didn't say, don't worry. Imagine you're in the middle of a road. The boat is swinging. And they tell you, uh-uh. Smile. Put on a straight face. Man, this thing is too crazy. <laughs> Imagine you have the worst news in the world and God tells you do not fear. Be of good fear. He told them, for I believe that it shall be even as it was told me. And the next verse says, next verse says, how be it we must cast upon some island. I want to read it in the message. Uh-huh. The next verse, 18. 
Next day, on the high seas again, and badly damaged now by the storm, we dumped the cargo overboard. Now, this had been many days. These guys were, it was, the ship was literally going. You, you don't know, you know, some of you who know how to swim know the power of water. When I see people swimming, I can imagine. That's why they say it's one of the strongest exercises. The third day, the sailors lighten up the ship further by throwing off the tackle and provisions. Listen, it had been many days since we had seen the stars and the sun. Wind and waves were battering us unmercifully, and we lost all hope of rescue. All hope. I want you to imagine how these men were. They lost all hope of rescue. All of it. You know, you can have hope a bit when the, the ship shows it still has some life on it. You understand? Eh? They still send you some money. You still have connections, you understand? You're still okay. You, you, they still send you some money. Yes, the, it's bad, but you still have like two weeks for the landlord to come. But I'm talking about six months in areas. And the landlord says tomorrow. And, and they still hope. And then you hear him on the door that morning. Boa, 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 get out of my house. Now, he has three guys who all don't want to know. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Are you hearing me? But because God had told Paul, because he said you will live and not die. Because he said that you shall be a wonder. Because he said you are the head and not the tail. Because he said I have forgiven you. Because he said you are my righteousness. Because he said. He said. He Tell your neighbor, he said, it's enough. He said, tell them he said. He said, he said, he said. Maybe I don't have an angel. Maybe I didn't have a divine visitation. Maybe a prophet did not speak. But he, he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, did he say? Ask your neighbor, did he say? He said that greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. He said that you are more than a conqueror by Christ who strengthens you. He said, he said, he said, he said. Tell your neighbor he said. Tell yourself he said. And it is impossible for him to lie. He said that I'm stretching forth. He said that he will satisfy me with long life. He said that I'm rich on the left and on the right. He said that I will increase in front and behind. He said that I'm wise. He said that I'll be promoted, that I'll go upward and upward only. He said that I'll not struggle in this world. He said. Did he say? So the angel, let's go back to the story. The angels appeared to him. And Paul says, With our appetite for both food and life long gone. Did you hear that? Now, aren't you, that's why I wanted you to read in the message for you to see where these men really were. Because some of you have not been there. So you don't even have a clue. He says, for with our appetite for both food and life long gone, Paul took his place amidst and said, Friends, 
you really should have listened to me back in Crete. Would have avoided all this trouble and trial. But there is no need to dwell on that now. From now on, things are looking. They are looking. From now on, things are looking. Yes, you made mistakes. Yes, you should have listened. Yes. But now, he said, things are looking. He says, I can assure you that there will not be a single drowning among us. So he says, although I can't say as much for the sheep, he says the sheep itself is what? Doomed. Next verse. Last night God's angel stood at my side, an angel of this God I serve. He says, saying to me, don't give up, Paul. You're going to stand before Caesar yet, and everyone sailing with you is also going to make it. And so, dear friends, take heart. I believe God will do exactly. what he told me and the next verse says but we're going to go we're going to shipwreck on some island or another praise the lord jesus christ indeed they made it they made it you will make it tell your neighbor you'll make it it doesn't matter what you are seeing now you will make it you will make it tell yourself call your name and say rita you will make it grace lureda you'll make it say zach mutiava you have overcome because he what because he what he said it. he said it. He said, our faith must grow. Amen. Tell your neighbor, our faith. It must come up. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, our faith must come up. It must come up. It must come up. It must come up. Your faith must come up. Things must look up only. Somebody shout hallelujah. Things must what? must look up things are looking up for me come on somebody say things are looking up for me yes so he took away human faith and he said I'm crucified with Christ yet not I but Christ lives he says, I'm dead, yet I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and now, he says, the life which I now live in the flesh. The life. He's talking about the life of the spirit. He's talking about the life which he now lives in the flesh. He says, the now life which I live in the flesh, I live, he says, by the faith of the Son of God. The Bible says, who loved me and gave himself for me. Think about it. We are talking about your life in the flesh. We're not talking about your life in the spirit. We're talking about your life, your physical life. He says, and the life, my physical life, I live by the faith of the Son. That means the Son of God has faith in my flesh. He has faith in my physical life. 
He has faith in everything that pertains to my physical existence and everything that touches my physical world, my finances, my job, my family, my health, my children, my education, my connections, my relatives, my future, my increase, my multiplication, my properties, my everything. He says, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself Who is thinking what I'm thinking? I said, who is thinking what I'm thinking? So he took away the human sufficiency. He took away human definition of faith. He gave you the faith of the Son of God. That's what Paul is saying. That not that we are sufficient of ourselves when it comes to the self, flesh, physical, He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves, the Bible says, to know or of anything as of ourselves. But he says, but the sufficiency, the ability is of God. The faith is of God. The provision is of God. The increase is of God. The miracles are of God. The signs are of God. The wonders are of God. The results are of God. The answers are of God. The destiny is of God. The wonders are of God. The breakthrough is of God. The testimony is of God. The preservation is of God. The life is of God. The health is of God. The children are of God. The husband is of God. The wife is of God. The business is of God. The relatives are of God. The car is of God. The, even the socks is of God. Hallelujah. He says, the sufficiency is of God. And the next verse says, who has made us able? The word they are able is fit. He has made us able ministers. Fit ministers. Able ministers. He has made us fit. Like he says in Timothy, thanks be to God who counted me worthy. He did not work out his worthiness. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's more than his ability. First Timothy uh, 1 Timothy 1.12. He says, I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful. Did you hear that? He has enabled me for that he counted me faithful. I did not count myself faithful for this ministry. Look in church history. Every man that has been called by God has doubted their ability. Every man. When God called Moses, he said, how shall I stand before Pharaoh, seeing I can't speak? When Solomon was talking to God, when he was asking for an understanding heart, wisdom and knowledge, he says, for who can judge such a great people? He weighed himself against the responsibility the Lord had given him and he knew that in his own strength and sufficiency there was not enough to do such greater work. You remember Jeremiah? What did Jeremiah say? He said, I'm young, right? And God told him, do not fear them. In fact, the scripture in Jeremiah says, don't fear their faces. I don't know what was wrong with their faces. He says, do not be afraid of their faces. Man, their faces you look at, eh? And you disqualify yourself. Who has understood what I just said? You enter this office, eh? And the guy comes in. So, uh, hello, how are you doing? What's your name? Yeah? Okay. All right, sit down. And for you, just a graduate. <laughs> Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. He says, don't fear their faces. That means there are some faces you can reach at. Eh? Anyway. Even the Son of God, he said, God, if it be possible, take this cup of suffering. 
of me. What am I trying to say? Ask every man that has been called greatly and with a great responsibility. Everyone at their one point will be convinced of their insufficiency. That's why we look toward God and say, God, if it's not you, we can't. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where we are going, unless the Lord upholds us, where you are going, unless the Lord of Sabaoth holds you, you're not sufficient. But he has promised that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. I will go with you. He has promised you that I will be with you. He says, go ye into the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in my name, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, for lo, I am with thee till the end. Who has understood what I just said? When Paul saw that sufficiency, he was bold to say, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Always causes us to triumph. That means, according to Paul, he does not expect failure in the believer. It's not there. He always, the Bible says, he didn't say, thanks be to God who sometimes. He didn't say, thanks be to God who many times. He didn't say, he did, thanks be to God who a few times. He didn't say, thanks be to God who for several times. Occasional times. Regular times. No, he says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. And the Bible says, he maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. In fact, the Amplified makes it easier for you to understand this sufficiency. He says, thanks be to God who in Christ, he says, listen, leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory. Now, understand this. In this instance, he's even separating you from the war and the battle. Are you hearing me? And, and Jesus is the one in the story. And you're the one, you're the one Jesus is showing, Apostle Grace. Victor. Victor. Put your name. He says, we are trophies of Christ's victory. And through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. And the next verse says, and for we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which the Bible says, excels unto God. That means, some of us, God does like this. Mm. Mm. Preach. Woo! Self, love, give. Woo! Prosper, increase. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, he always causes me to triumph. I'm Christ's trophy of victory. He's our sufficiency. Tell your neighbor, we have made it. We have made it. We have made, we are not even, we shall, no. That is being humble. It's false humility. Tell your neighbor, we have made it. He says, be of good cheer, little children, for you have overcome the world. I have overcome this world. There is nothing the devil has on you. The prince of this world has nothing in you. This is medicine and life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because he what? 
he fainted. Come and talk to God. He's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him man his word just to rest upon pray pray just to know that there's the Lord to speak in other tongues. If you don't have them and you have your own language, speak it. Oh, how sweet to trust Jesus has to trust his friend.
He did. He doesn't. He will not. Then you ask, Apostle, what about those who fail? Yet they've believed and done this. I tell them no. They really don't know. If you know the truth, the truth makes you free. The Bible says, my people, they perish because of poverty, because of lack, because of incurable diseases, because of failure, because of, of funny marriages, because of lack. The word has its own power. The Bible says it works by its own word. Innate power. You don't need to help the word. Now that you've heard it, just say work. Just say work. And then you'll have life and rest. That joy and peace. So powerful words there. Life, rest, joy, peace. Somebody say life, rest, joy, peace. That's the man who has trusted. That's the man who has what? Trust him. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're here and you've been struggling with something, you're sorted. You're sorted. It is well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Stretch forth. Move far. Do not spare. There's a fear in stretching. But it's not here anymore. It has been dealt with. Thank you, Jesus. The sick are healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Doesn't matter what sickness. It doesn't matter. Somebody shout hallelujah. The troubled are free. God is restoring someone's marriage here. A barren person is going to be, is going to conceive this week, this coming week. Someone is conceiving here. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, and you say, yeah, I want to be born again today, because all of this is useless, if you have not received this life, there is no perfect day. The perfect day is now. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come. 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 If you're there and you say, I want to be born again today, come. Come. Stand here. You're not going to regret this day.
This is the best decision you're ever going to make in your life. The best. Repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and that you were raised for me. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.